The summer of wild weather, the hottest July on record, crippling drought in half the country, and now tropical storms are bringing epic rains to the East Coast. Ginger Z has been out storm chasing. Oh my God, that was huge! We're chasing one of nature's most destructive and unpredictable forces. So you, oh, look at that. That was beautiful. Tim Samaras is a seasoned storm chaser and no stranger to wild weather. Most of the core, I believe, is, is right here. But today he's focused on another nearly impossible mission. He's attempting to document the birth of a lightning strike. Tim wants a glimpse behind that blazing flash. He believes this moment holds the clues that will help us better understand the mystery of this lethal phenomenon. Armed with an ultra high speed camera. Here's a shot we just got. Oh, cool. Oh, my gosh. He will try to capture this elusive moment as it's never been seen before. Then the return stroke. Oh, my God. So, this is it? That's it. Each lightning bolt is five times hotter than the sun, and lightning kills an average of 54 people a year in the U.S. alone. And even though every thunderstorm is pregnant with that brilliant but deadly force, we know surprisingly little about where, when, or why it strikes. Why does it choose a target like a tree instead of a building, or a building instead of a tree? You know, perhaps some of the imagery that we collect in the field may help answer some of those questions. This one's dead, this one's developing. This Tim's been looking for the answers since 2006, when he first started chasing lightning. His results so far have been impressive. These shots came from a high-speed camera called the Phantom. It can record dramatic slow motion at 10,000 frames per second. But in order to capture that fleeting moment when the lightning bolt is actually born, Samaris will need something much faster. The problem is, is oh, geez, Tim, it's really easy. Just get in your car, go find a, go hear a rumble of thunder, go park up next to it you're in. Well, it's not that easy. Sometimes it's almost as difficult chasing a tornado as is a good lightning storm. To get a sense of how difficult an endeavor this really is, you'll have to know a little bit more about the way lightning strikes the ground. First, a negatively charged bolt takes off and branches out from the base of a cloud. Then an upward positive bolt shoots up from the ground to meet it. A return stroke of electricity rockets back to the cloud and all we see is a flash of light. There's no camera in the world fast enough to pull back that curtain. Okay, so we're gonna go see the kahuna. Except for maybe this one. There's actually 82 cameras on this wow. instrument here taking one picture of the lightning and one microsecond steps of time. He's proud to tell us it's the highest speed, high resolution camera in the world. This camera was actually built in the 60s, so it's probably pushing 45, 50 years old. During the Cold War, it was used to record nuclear testing, and in the 80s, Tim was actually one of the operators. He has since retrofitted the camera for the digital age. This is a shaky image of what the kahuna is seeing right now. But after many attempts in the field, Tim still hasn't successfully shot a lightning strike with the unwieldy camera, at least not yet. I'm not going to give up until this is done, especially if the naysayers tell me this can't be done. That just drives me harder. All right, sweetie. All right, See you later. Bye. Have a good trip. Yep. Today, he and his son Paul are at it again, and we get to tag along for the ride. Yep, let's go. So Tim and I have looked at the forecast. It looks like northern New Mexico between 7 and 10 p.m. on this latest computer model pops up a few thunderstorms, and that is going to be our target. It's an arduous trip, covering four states, more than 800 miles, and plenty of pop and drop disappointing storms. Yeah, yeah this storm, this storm <laughs> kicked out several lightning strikes. They were probably about five minutes apart. Hardly worth firing the equipment over, but it's pretty. But yeah, if rainbow pretty. chasing were the goal, we did it. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> yeah, we scored the F5 in rainbows. Yeah, we did it. And when all options south were exhausted, a bright beacon of hope started gleaming on the radar. Uh, this has to be the storm because this is about all that's out here. It's this last line of storms and it's the most promising we've seen the entire trip. Problem is, it's 85 miles in the opposite direction and we only have an hour to get into position. Any false move, wrong turn or even a bathroom break yeah, actually, and we, we could miss the magic moment. But thankfully, just as dusk settled in, Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> there it was, due north, a classic thunderstorm bursting with lightning. All right, it is happening, it's gonna come right now. CG? Oh, CG. Yeah, it was like 12 o'clock.
And then we snagged one, a beautiful cloud to ground strike, or CG. Pay dirt for Tim. So numerous branches, then the first one hits the ground. It's a beautiful image, but it wasn't taken with the kahuna. See that bright flash? That means the camera wasn't fast enough to capture the exact moment when the bolt was born. Maybe next time. This condition here is very difficult to run the kahuna. It's not good enough. For it's, it's not good enough. Kahuna or not, for those of us who live for storms, sometimes the chase alone is reason enough to sit back and just enjoy the show. I don't know how many storms I've seen in my lifetime, but every single one of them, I still get pretty excited. The little boy in me just wants to come out here and just watch and stare. For Nightline, I'm Ginger Z in Colorado. Tim Samaras's hunt for lightning is featured in the August issue of National Geographic magazine.